Hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your Uncle Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do unbiased price action analysis. So last week the SPY back tested a very critical level, a couple of critical levels. I have my FIB levels adjusted here uh, from June 15th high down to June 26th low. Having the FIB levels like this just, it seems the... The market seemed to be respecting these FIB extension levels a little better than the way I had it before. So I'm going to stick it, stick with it like this. All right. So my levels are going to be updated today. Okay. And first critical resistant level is that 447 level. That's a 1.236 FIB level. It was the high, around the high of Friday's high. It's also around where the 50 daily moving average is all right 446.8 on friday was where it was it may creep up a little bit tomorrow uh for monday to start off the week but to be safe i'm i'll round it the resistant level to 447 and obviously if, if bulls want more upside we have a low right here a potential low from last thursday if they want this to be a legit low Critical resistant must recapture or clear. 50 daily moving average as well as a FIB level at 447. Would be a good start for the bulls. And if they do, that would be the trigger to go long. Targets I would be watching. Are the next FIB level uh, at 448.7. But we'll give it a zone 448.5 to 449 zone. And above 449, I have 450.2. That's the 1.5 Fibonacci extension level, as well as 451.7. That is the 1.618 Fib extension level. And above 151.7, not only will recapture this Fib level, but it will recapture my green trend line. So above that will be very bullish. Put in higher targets and play 454. Gap fill at 456.3-ish. 4.58 pivot high from July 31st and then July high at 4.59.4-ish. But the bull case, for the bull case to play or to be a possibility, like I said, it must start off with the recapture of 4.47, all right? Now, you guys can see that wick. There was selling pressure from that FIB level slash 50 daily moving average. So as usual, I trust rejections when it can break down critical support level. For me, that will be 444 first. And then 452.5, pivot low from last week. And then 441, that's a FIB level. And 439, that's another FIB level that also aligns with my white trend line. From February 2nd high connecting to June 26th low. Below 449 could potentially send us back down to 443 pivot low here. But I'll have 437.5, 436, and 434.2-ish in route first. We'll play it level to level, and if it breaks down more, leave runners. And if the price action goes more in your favor, you can always add to those runners. Add to your winners instead of adding to your losers. So basically, above 447, bullish, potentially head up higher, and below 444 is bearish. Anything in between is chop. Now, I doubt we'll have chop next week. I'm favoring that we're going to get some trendy moves, all right? Uh, this week, or last week, I should say, last week was pretty choppy week. We consolidate it. If we go to a smaller time frame, it came in the form of a descending wedge. Okay? A descending wedge. We broke out on Friday, but it didn't lead anywhere. So we'll see what happens this week. Overall, uh, it needs to stay above 444 for the breakout to stay intact and bang out some higher levels up to, you know, clear 447 as mentioned. Right? I need to, I need to adjust my levels here. But yeah, that's pretty much 
the levels to watch. Above 447, bearish. Below 444, bull, uh, excuse me, above 447 is bullish. Below 444 is bearish, and it cancels the breakout of the descending wedge. All right? So, yes, the first week of September, late August into first week of September was a choppy week, was a consolidation week. Um, if we check seasonality pull up a picture of seasonality I'm sure I have it somewhere here this is an older picture that I'm pulling up um, yeah this is an older picture I need to get an updated picture one sec Here we go. So, this is an updated picture. And I wrote here the last time I updated seasonality with you guys. I wrote that we are here. You guys can see we were entering the chop phase. Which was the late August to the first week of September. We were supposed to enter the chop phase of consolidation week to process the up move from late August. Is that what happened? Pretty much, yes. Alright, that's the up move from late August. And then consolidate. Coming in the form of a descending wedge. So still, in my opinion, seasonality is tracking. So if it still continues to track, then this upcoming week, this week coming up, this week, we should have a trend move. Meaning no chops. We should get some moves, some tradable moves. It's suggesting... That we will go higher into mid-September where we reach a top. And we're going to get a massive, massive drop to the downside. Now look at the average drop in September. It's huge. Now remember the July high? Uh, August, late July high into August. Remember that? That drop on average it was much smaller than the drop that's supposed to come in September. Uh, Mid-September, late to late September. And a lot of bears were happy with that drop in July. So if we're if you guys are happy with that drop in July, you guys are going to love the drop that could potentially come in mid to late September. Okay? And we'll talk more about that when we get there. As of right now, we have one more week before we get to mid to late July. Uh, excuse me, September. All right? So watch out for that. I am not favoring a chop for this coming week. I'm favoring some trendy move. Fingers crossed. I could be wrong, but fingers crossed. It's saying on average it's going to move to the upside. So if the price action confirms it on the chart, don't argue with the price action. And it starts with clearing 447. Now, this is not a crystal ball. As much as it's been right... It has a history of being wrong as well. It's more right than wrong, but it can be wrong. Okay? So, if we don't get a pop to the upside, we could get a trendy move to the downside. And like I said, that'll start with the breakdown of 444 and 442.5. Alright, I hope that makes sense. Let's move on to the triple Q. Triple Q managed to recap, like it got below this 371.3 level I had. That's the 50% FIB level. Managed to clear it intraday. Got some selling pressure around the resistant level. All right. So overall, if you're a bear, for me to trust this false breakout and rejection here from Friday, got to break down 371.3 to put 369, 367.4. And lower in play. Below 371.3 and 369, I would be bearish. To be bullish, bulls need above two levels. 373.5, break back out of this orange trend line. And 375.6, break back above the macro level, fib level. All right? Above 375.6, I would be bull bias. As of right now, I just need to see 371.3 and say 369 break down this week to confirm some bearishness. All right. Dow Jones 
Testing that FIB level, the 1.236 FIB level at 346.5, close just a tad below or around there. If it can get above, that's bullish, put in 349 and play. And clearing 349 will likely make last Wednesday and Thursday's low uh, a you know some type of short-term bottom and could trigger more upside up to 351 and 353. All right? But if a failure to break 346.5 is bearish though. Watch for the breakdown of support around 344 to confirm putting 342.5 in play. It's more likely to test now. If this is a lower high, then support at 342.5 is more likely to test. And if that breaks down, we could potentially head down to 340. That's what I'm favoring, 340. IWM still looking overall bearish, all right? To put it quite simple, I can't get bullish on this indice. Unless it breaks above 185.6. Above that, I would be short-term bullish in, fa in favor of 188 to be tested. And above 188, I'll favor last week as a bottom and we could possibly head up even higher. But if it can't break 185.6, support is at 183. If that level breaks down, we're likely heading down to 186.5-ish where bulls will have a shot for a bounce. But if they fail, we're going to head a lot lower possibly down to 177.5 first and then gap fill at 175.6 tesla still unfortunately in consolidation mode even with the double inside candle i told you guys about still not breaking the range still chopping but you know the volatility is nice you can get some level to level move intraday but if you're thinking about swinging well we still need to see the break of this uh, pattern right here that's looking more like if you look at this yellow line and the white line it's looking like uh what is that descending triangle as of right now but overall i can't get bullish on tesla for the medium term or something unless it breaks above 253 it's been consolidating we did have some false breakouts that led to decent level to level moves but if it breaks out again i'm favoring it's going to be a real move because uh, it's been consolidating, building strength. It's building strength for something. It's not doing this for nothing. So above 253, bullish. And I will favor it going up higher. Possibly up to 263. Maybe, just maybe to the 270-ish. Alright? Um, but if it's going to go to the downside, I have support at uh, you know 246.5. If that fails, we're likely going to test 245, 242. And 240.7. Below 242 and 240.7 is when I would be bare bias on the Tesla and favor a lot more downside. As of right now, guys, is in consolidation phase. You gotta we gotta reserve our judgment and wait for the price action to show us what what it wants to do so we can follow it like good sheeps. Apple. Uh we got a fib level here at 178. It closed right around 178, so it's battling, okay? So above it would put 180.75 and 182 back in play. Above those levels is the only way I will be bullish, and if it does, I won't argue with the price action. But as long as below, it needs to get back, you know, as long as below 182 and 180.75, bears have a shot here, but they need to show fall through and break back below 178 and 176. If it does... We'll likely go test 173.5 and 172 again, where bulls will have a shot up for a bounce, okay? If they don't, we are definitely heading down lower, down to 170, possibly down even lower, down to 164, okay? 168 and 166 in route first, of course. NVDA had a strong rejection from a FIB level last week, from my 23.6 FIB level, the blue one. And then the pink one is 78.6 FIB level at 464. Uh, strong rejection from there. All right, 464 and 465.5 were the critical resistant levels. And bears stepped up where they needed to. Okay, so for this week, if bears can keep it below 457.5, I would be bearish and stay bearish on NVDA. I'll favor 452 being tested. And a breakdown of 452 would put NVDA in false breakout mode of my orange triangle pattern, okay? Got to break down below 452 and 450 
to be bearish, put us in a false breakout mode. All right, but if it can recapture 457.5 and 461, 464 and 465.5 would be back in play. If those levels get recaptured, then I would favor a bottom is in, and we could possibly head up higher with 470 first gap fill, and possibly go test 475-ish or higher, all right? But it got to get above 457.5 to start, and overall, in the bigger picture, above 464 and 465.5 to be bullish, all right? Also in that same bigger picture, below 452 is a false breakout. Very bearish if that level fails. Microsoft. Still look like it's bear flagging, but no breakdown. Testing our next FIB level, 78.6 FIB level at 335.5. It's got some rejection there, all right? Uh, 335.5 to 336 zone is resistant. If that clears, don't argue with the price action. We're heading higher. We're likely heading higher with 338.4 and 342-ish in play. I'd like to see a breakdown of this green trend line. That needs to be a breakdown of 332 and then breakdown 327. Fib level. That's a Fib level, all right? So below 332 is a bearish warning. You can look to short. That would put... Uh, 329.6 and 327 in play. Below 327 would be very bearish for Microsoft. And we're likely heading down lower, down to 325 or lower, okay? Amazon still working to try to put a bottom in. Did not, you know, it recaptured 136.6 on Thursday. And then Friday, it, it defended it and tried to test the next resistant level at 139. If it breaks 139, guys, look to long. With 140.6, 142, 143, and 145 in play. I'll get bearish when we break down support. Give me that false breakout setup. Starting with 136.6 and 135. Below 135, I'll be bear bias favoring 132 and 130 to be tested, okay? Google also trying to put in the bottom. It needs to break above uh, 137.4 as a bullish warning. Above 138, I'll be a lot more bullish in favor 140.3 and 142 above. All right. To be bearish, it needs to break down support starting with 136.4 and 134.8. That would put 132.8 and 129.5 back in play. Meta, not doing much, Meta, but it does have an inside uh, daily candle here. The range is 307 down to 292. I know it's a big range, but that's the setup the charts are giving us. A break of that range should give us the next direction of move. So above 307, I'd be bear, uh, bull bias. And below 292, I'd be bear bias. All right? Let me say that again. Above 307, bull bias. Below 292, bear bias. Anything in between is chop, unfortunately. All right? So there is resistance at 298, uh, 300, 303, 305. 307 and then 309 that's resistant level support is at uh 297 295 uh 295 293 and then 289 below 289 would be pretty bearish as well okay netflix not going anywhere that much okay support is 130 uh 437.5 gotta break down that level for me to be bear bias uh resistant is at 446.5. Uh, if that can clear, we could possibly trigger more upside, maybe up to 453-ish. Uh, 451.4 in play first, of course. All right, so below 437.5, I would be bear bias. Uh, if it can break resistant, 444.5, and what did I say, 446.8, yeah, then I'll be bullish, and maybe we get some more upside. AMD is looking bearish to me. Rejected from my yellow trend line. And then look at that. That was uh, Tuesday and Wednesday's price action. And then Friday's price, price action. Look at that long wick with the hammer. Bearish hammer. Okay. So overall, as long as below 107.5. Bearish. Okay. Breakdown of 105 would be good follow through. Look to short. With 103.4, 101.6, and 99.5 in play. Okay. Stay overall. Stay bearish below 107.5. Four, okay, a recapture of it would be pretty nice for the bulls 
And then a breakout of 110 would be a breakout of my yellow trend line. That's the only way I'll be bullish on AMD at this point. If it recaptures 107.4 and break out 110 to put the higher targets in play. 112.2, 115, 116.2, 118, and 120. Okay, hopefully you guys heard all that. Spotify, you know that 61.8 Fib level did defend it technically. And now we broke down the 50% Fib level at 155.6. As long as below 155.6 stay bearish, a breakdown of 154 would be good follow through for the, the bears and put lower targets in play. 149.3 is a big possibility with 146 below that. Spotify is a volatile stock. Don't sleep on this stock. To put a bottom in, First off, it needs to start off by recapturing 155.6. That would put 158.7, 160, and 162 in play. Above 162, our favor of bottom is in. Targeting 164, 166, and 170. All right, 169.4, excuse me. Above 166, I got 169.4, and then 171. All right? That's the levels for Spotify. Now let's see. Uh, uh, we'll end this with the dark pool. Here's dark pool. 1.4 billion in premium at the 445.4 level. 1.1 billion in premium at the 445.4 level. Okay, that's two orders. What else we got? 1.7 in billion in premium. That's even more. Around 444.8. All right, watch those levels. Dark pool levels, guys. And let's see, option flow, filter for 500k premiums or above. Okay, SPY is bullish. Triple Q is bearish. Dow Jones, nothing. IWM, bearish. Yeah, these dates are for mid-November. Mid but yeah, it's bearish. Tesla is bearish. Apple is bullish. Microsoft, uh, NVDA is bearish. Now Microsoft is bearish as well. Amazon, bullish. Goog, bullish. Goog with the L, nothing. Meta, nothing. AMD, nothing. And Spotify. No one trade these stocks? Well, the options, contracts. I guess not. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please consider joining my Discord if you want more content from Uncle Charters. Other than that, have a great evening. Peace.